what we have here folks is the Barbara Walter special and it's entitled how to live to be 150 years old it was aired April 1st 2008 so now I was looking through my my DVDs and I had a copy of it and I checked on YouTube and I didn't see it and I looked it up online and it, you know it does there's some reviews about it and all so I decided maybe I'll I'll record it here and I'll put it on there so everybody can look at it if you missed it it's pretty good but this is like 11 year, over 11 years ago and some of the stuff they talk about you think it would be you know nowadays but it's not really I know some things they can can do I wish they would come up with it if we, if we want to live longer I mean it depends how long you want to live but according to this I already looked at it and it really shows a lot of different things so I think I'm going to start it up here now I have it on pause just to let everybody know that this oh one more thing there's commercials and I didn't take them out sometimes I do sometimes I'll pause it as it's being played you know and I'll and I'll record it but I'll, I'll be taking the commercials will be out of it I didn't do it this time years ago I don't know if you remember VCRs, they had a commercial skip. So I think if you recorded something, and when you played it back, to look at it, it, it would skip ahead. Like, every time a commercial come, it would pause, skip past it, and then start back up again. So that, I don't think that worked out too good. But so, so I bought a copy of this on a, a VCR tape back in the day. And then I played it back. I had a commercial skip on, a commercial advance, whatever they called it, and then copied it on a DVD. So when I, the copy would, would be without commercials. But the commercials would still be there. If you wanted to play it without the commercial skip, you would still have it. In this case, the commercials are there. And I, I think it's good to see the commercials back then, see what was going on with the commercials, you know, 11 years ago. Now everything is ads anyway and all the stuff that's on, you know, it's a big thing on the, on the computer, is those ads. So bear with it if you, that's the only thing I, I'm letting you know ahead of time. It's okay, I think I'm going to start it up now and to see how it goes. I think with the new technology, you could prolong life for several hundred years. A lot of people will say this can't possibly happen. We're on the verge of cheating Mother Nature, extending life to 150 and beyond. This is not science fiction. Tonight, the most amazing discoveries. We stumbled upon this molecule from red wine. I almost fell off my chair. Need a new body part? They'll grow one for you. It's phenomenal. If you're in your 80s, you'll be behaving as if you were in your 50s. And preserving your body in these texts for the future. What would you say to each other if you uh, defrosted at the same time? You made it. Plus, how is Paul Newman winning the race against time? Ah, so fantastic! Live to be 150. Can you do it? Good evening. Take a guess. How many people are 100 years or older here in America? Would you believe more than 84,000 and climbing at an astonishing rate? Tonight we're taking you way beyond nips and tucks and diet and exercise to the cutting edge of the search for a longer, healthier life. What you will see would not have been possible just a few years ago. So whether you are 20 or 40 or 60 years old, living well past 100 could happen to you. It is a yearning that grows in us before we're even aware. Taking shape as we do, maturing into a passion for life. We're born into this world and we wish we could make time stop at the peak of our beauty. Our grace, our glory. That dream has seemed impossible until recently 
according to scientists like renowned gerontologist Dr. Robert N. Butler, who is himself an active 81. Could a baby born today live to be 150? It is certainly conceivable. We now are very poised to be able to manipulate and slow the aging process, so it could happen. Dr. Aubrey Dubray is a respected expert on the biology of aging who developed his theories at Cambridge University in England, and his theories are as unconventional as his appearance. Dr. Dubray, when most people talk about living longer, they're talking about 10 years, 20 years, how many years are you talking about? I think that within the next few decades, we have a pretty good chance of effectively defeating aging as a cause of death. I think people will live to about a thousand years in that circumstance, on average. When he's not hunting down the river can, he is floating radical ideas on life extension. A lot of people will say living to be a hundred, okay, living to be a thousand, um, you're off your rocker, doctor. That's right. And it's my job to explain why, in fact, this follows by step-by-step -step logic. Within the next 20, 25, 30 years, we'll develop rejuvenation technologies that can be applied to people who are already in middle age and keep them middle age or less for another, let's say, 20 or 30 years. During that 20 or 30 years, the technologies will be further refined to give them another, let's say, 50 years, and so on. Just in case his time runs out before the science kicks in, Dr. Debray plans to take the road less traveled to immortality, chemically preserving his body, a practice so outlandish that it is fair game for skeptics and comics alike. The animation is complete. Where am I? You've been cryogenically frozen for 30 years. Who are these people? The shouting is a temporary side effect of the unfreezing process. Just outside of Phoenix, Arizona, stands a testament to man's obsession with long life. Inside these stainless steel containers at the Alcor Company are people who, before passing on, signed up to have their bodies treated in a process called cryogenic preservation. Immediately after death, the blood is replaced with a solution designed to protect the tissues against extreme cold. The body is then immersed headfirst in a vat of liquid nitrogen and stored at 320 degrees below zero, all in the hopes that science will one day restore the person to life. And these are the actual containers? These are the actual containers. Each one of these holds four whole body patients and five brain patients. Alcor's Tanya Jones says 79 patients are preserved here, ranging in age from 20 to 99, as well as 24 family pets. It is also the resting place of Boston Red Sox Hall of Famer, Ted Williams. When do you think this is going to happen, this bringing them back to life? We can't wake these people up until we have cures for whatever killed them. No one knows when or even if that will ever happen, but that hasn't stopped more than 800 others from making their reservations. When you say death, do your part when you get married, <laughs> that, that doesn't really apply for us. Tripper and Venus McCarthy have signed up to be preserved at a cost of $75,000 each. If it does work, I mean, more than any jackpot you could win today, cryonics is like the ultimate lottery ticket. Shannon and her husband, Dean Malcolmus, have also bought into it. After becoming a mother, it really made me feel like it was um, a good thing to do. And they're not just preserving themselves, they signed up their three children as well. Tell me what it means to be cryo-preserved. It's sort of like being frozen. And you do want to do it. Yeah, because it's better to have a chance than no chance coming back. So a hundred years from now, you're going to be together again. We hope so. What will you say to each other if you are defrosted at the same time? We made it. <laughs> <laughs> Life. It's all we really know. Maybe that's why we want to hold on to it as long as possible. But how close is science to actually turning that dream into reality? When we come back, we'll show you. Eternal youth could be just a heartbeat away. Herbal Essences brings you another great escape. A new collection of shampoo and conditioners for long hair. With ravishing red raspberries. Mm. And soft satin. Grow your hair as 
as long as you want it. Shampoo and conditioners for long hair. From Herbal Essences. The Toyota Corolla is so fuel efficient, we gave our friend a gallon of gas and put his fiance on a yacht far, far away with an all-star water polo team.
much of this what I have to drink to really make a difference? Well, our experiments tell us probably about a thousand bottles a day. So that was not the solution. Dr. Sinclair then went back to the lab and found a way to make resveratrol 1,000 times more potent. So what does it do in the body? Well, what we have discovered is that resveratrol works on a gene, which is called SIRT1, and this is a gene that controls the aging process. Resveratrol seeks out that gene and switches it on. And with that gene, Activated in the mouse on the right by a high dose of resveratrol, she quickly turned into a mini Olympian, running twice as far as the untreated mouse on the left. And they were eating a high fat diet, a fatty diet, and they lived just as long as a lean, healthy mouse, which means that they didn't get heart disease, cancer, even osteoporosis, and they lived 30% longer. Can you do this in humans? With the same exact gene. And we think that resveratrol could have similar benefits in people. Realizing the blockbuster potential for his new pill, Sinclair teamed up with biotech entrepreneur Chris Westfall, together raising more than $100 million for further research. And we think that we can increase healthy lifespan. So if you're in your 80s, you'll be behaving as if you were in your 50s. In the first human trial, a form of resveratrol successfully treated type 2 diabetes, one of the major diseases of aging. If everything goes very well, we will seek regulatory approval from the FDA in the next five years. I think a lot of people will say you're raising expectations. This, this can't possibly happen. My answer to that is, I agree. But it's true. What else can I say? Aging is really a set of diseases. And if we slow them down and cure them, people will live longer healthier lives. And you're talking especially now about diabetes and Alzheimer's? So the major killers of Western society are exactly the diseases that should be able to be treated with the drugs we're developing. Well, you know what, Doctor? Cheers. Cheers. On a remote island in western Massachusetts, surrounded by dinosaur fossils, lives one of the world's top stem cell and cloning specialists, Dr. Robert Lanza. This is a nest of dinosaur eggs. They're, they're over 100 million years old. Can you clone a dinosaur from them? You can't clone from stone. You need a living cell. This is a living cell in Lanza's lab, advanced cell technology. And from this, you can clone a cow. A cow, and you can use the exact same trick and clone a dog or a cat. Dr. Lanza was the first scientist to clone an endangered animal, this wild ox, and he cloned herds of cows, each identical. In the process, Dr. Lanza found an essential key to aging, common to all cells, including humans. A cell's age can be measured by those little yellow dots called telomeres. What is a telomere? Telomeres are, are the body's aging clock. The genetic makeup in our body is, is, consists basically of strands of DNA, sort of like the shoestring. And at the end of these strands of DNA, there are these little caps. And these caps are the telomeres. And every time your cell divides, that gets shorter and shorter. And then when it's gone or a certain shortness, it dies. With embryonic stem cells and cloning, we're able to create new healthy cells that have fully restored telomeres, just like a brand new shoelace. These cloned cows could live to be the oldest on the planet. The same effect applied in humans could extend our lives to more than 150 years. Dr. Lanza's next challenge was to learn how to regenerate damaged body parts. He started by observing how the body works to repair itself. We're not as clever as nature. It actually turns out that when your tissue is damaged, it sends out signals to say, help, help. These cells are smart, and they know exactly where to go to, to fix the tissue, and they won't go anywhere else. Then Lanza tried it, injecting stem cells into injured animals. What we found, literally, within 24 to 48 hours, they went right to the site of the damage. You just put them in the body, and they said, I'm going to go to the eye, I'm going to go to the heart, I'm going to go to the liver. I'm gonna... That's it, exactly. These are the body's master cells. they actually immortal. They grow forever, and we can turn them into virtually every cell in your body. And Dr. Lanza has even grown the fluid of life in his laboratory, human blood. This is blood made from stem cells. Yes, these are, this is human red blood cells that we generated from embryonic stem cells. He removes a single cell without harming the human embryo, and he turns it into stem cells. 
And, and the beautiful thing about that is that it's universal. It'll match everybody. So you won't have to worry about tissue typing. Tissue engineering researchers liken the process to restoring a classic car. A part wears out, just replace it. Okay, someday, if you get in an auto accident, we'll just take a skin cell and grow you up a new kidney. Muscles, heart valves, arteries, all growing in the lab. So cells could, in the future, replace almost any part of the body. Absolutely. We're doing this today. I, I know it sounds crazy and it sounds like science fiction, but we're already learning how to fix the body. Human bladders grown in the lab have already been successfully implanted into seven patients. Dr. Doris Taylor, director of the University of Minnesota's Center for Cardiovascular Repair, also sees huge potential for stem cells in treating heart disease. The problem is a lack of healthy hearts for transplantation. We need a heart. Why not go for the gusto and see if we can build one? What do you need to build a heart? You need cells? Well, we got cells. Stem cells are us. Dr. Taylor went to work harvesting heart stem cells from rats. Wouldn't it be cool if we could take what nature's given us, which is a heart, beautiful organ, remove all the cells and put new cells back? And from that, the idea was born. After injecting the heart stem cells in an empty heart framework, the cells knew what to do. Just add nutrients and a pacemaker. Within days, they had grown into a living, beating heart. The coolest thing is we put the electrodes on, we teach the heart what to do, we can turn them off, and it keeps beating. It's phenomenal. We've opened a door that's going to provide another tool for organ transplantation in the future. I believe that uh, if a child born today, we will eventually be able to replace almost every part of their body. This child could live to be how old? I think with the new technology, you could prolong life to several hundred years. When we come back, does eating less mean living more? You're weighing the lemon juice, you're weighing the olive oil. Eating is supposed to be fun. The latest ideas for living longer, do they work? Next. Woke up this morning, I suddenly realized we're all in this together. fast, but unlike other sleep aids, there's a second layer that helps you stay asleep. 
Until you know how ambient CR will affect you, you shouldn't drive or operate machinery. Be sure you're able to devote 7 to 8 hours to sleep before being active again. Sleepwalking and eating or driving while not fully awake with amnesia for the event have been reported. In rare cases, sleep aids may cause severe allergic reactions, such as swelling of your tongue or throat or shortness of breath. If you experience any of these behaviors or reactions, contact your doctor immediately. Side effects may include next day drowsiness, dizziness, and headache. It's not narcotic and can be taken for as long as your prescriber recommends. However, like most sleep aids, it has some risk of dependency. Don't take it with alcohol. Ask your prescriber about ambient CR for a good night's sleep from start to finish. Lobster Fest is the best time of year to let yourself indulge in succulent mane and rock lobster tails in new and classic ways. Lobster Fest ends soon at Red Lobster. ABC Sunday. Four competitors are left to make two lifelong wishes come true. But a mission this important could drive one to their breaking point. Got out of here. An all-new Oprah's Big Give, Sunday at 9, 8 central on ABC. Next Tuesday, you'll laugh your pants off. I'm feeling a draft. When Austin Legal returns with all new episodes, there will be tears of joy. Are you okay? Oh! All new Austin Legals are back next Tuesday at 10, 9 central on ABC. Are there any shortcuts to a long life? Well, some people believe they have the answers, and they're putting themselves to the test in their quest for longevity. Meredith Averill and her husband, Paul McLaughlin, have been practicing calorie restriction for the last 14 years. They eat only specific amounts of foods that are high in nutrition but low in calories, like vegetables. Lots and lots and lots of vegetables. Meredith and Paul, you are weighing your meal and tabulating calories on the computer? Why? Because I want to know the amount of fat in my meal. I want to know the amount of protein in my meal. So how many calories do they consume in a day? Meredith, about 1,500, and Paul and his fellow male calorie restrictors, about 1,900 calories. That's 30% less than the average American. They even measured their olive oil and lemon juice. They claim the benefits of eating this way are astounding. How old are you? I'm 61. My heart and my blood vessels are, are like those of a person many decades younger than me. I'm 60 years old. I have 20-20 vision. Long IQ tests have increased 30%. That's uh, over 14 years. It's usually just the opposite. What about skin and hair? That's important to a woman. A lot of people come up to me and ask me, what am I doing to my skin that is looking as healthy as it does? And does calorie restriction work? Dr. Robert N. Butler is the author of The Longevity Revolution. He says it's the only proven way to extend life. Almost every animal species, it has increased life significantly. If you reduce by about 30%, you get 30 additional percent of life. But long-term studies on humans are just getting started. Meredith and Paul are the subject of one study, and in their new book, The CR Way, they talk about how to live a calorie-restricted life. A typical breakfast? All this morning I had some uh, lentils. I had salmon. I had barley, I had uh, a nice a vegetable soup, I had uh, some fruit, I had some blueberries, I had some raspberries and strawberries, I had some wheat berries. Okay, okay, okay. no donuts, no donuts and coats. After that big breakfast, Meredith and Paul have only one more meal at 1 p.m. But 76-year-old Don Dowden eats just once a day. I'm e easily able to go 23 hours without food. And when I sit down for a meal, I'm very hungry, and I love it. You know, we probably should I eat off salad plates instead of dinner plates. But clearly, we eat too much food. But if you're aiming to stay young, following Sylvester Stallone's lead may not be a good idea. To help keep his 61-year-old body in action hero shape, he uses human growth hormone, HGH, for its supposed anti-aging properties. But Professor Jay Olshansky of the Chicago School of Public Health says, beware. With it, it's absolutely shocking uh, that anyone would introduce this hormone into their body. Um, there's a whole series of problems associated with it, uh, elevated risks of diabetes, of cancer. I would prefer to raise growth hormone levels naturally, weightlifting, which raises growth hormone levels rather than taking growth hormone injections. Okay, right now your heart rate's at 98 beats. Dr. Terry Grossman, 
runs a longevity clinic, the Grossman Wellness Center, in Denver. He says you need a long-term systematic plan that includes strength training, aerobic exercise, a healthy diet, and meditation. Grossman starts with a comprehensive medical exam that lasts two full days. We run a battery of tests, and we'll find that people have certain genetic predispositions to diseases, or they have certain conditions. So we'll use some supplements or medications that are specifically designed to prevent or treat those. 60-year-old Ray Kurzweil, scientist and award-winning inventor, teamed up with Grossman to write a book on the future of aging. Grossman and Kurzweil believe a personalized plan of aggressive supplementation helps to slow the aging process. I'm taking you know, 150 different substances, each of which has a lot of scientific evidence behind it. I have the hormonal levels and the nutrient levels of a 40-year-old. If I wasn't doing this, that would not be the case. So what exactly is he taking? A lot of things you've heard of like basic vitamins and minerals, and a lot of things you've never heard of, like phosphatidylcholine, which actually reverses the aging of the cell membrane. Other experts remain skeptical. For the vast majority of the population who are taking these nutritional supplements, all they have is very, very expensive urine. The things the experts all agree on is that everyone should be exercising, eating less, and lowering their stress levels. And as for the value of caloric restriction and supplementation to extend life, it will be years before we know for sure. But in the meantime, as they say about chicken no, soup, it can't hurt, and it might just help. When we come back, actor Paul Newman speeding toward the finish line. What's his secret for winning the ultimate race? Fantastic! Next. freaking out about my wireless bill. I plan on saying whatever my daughter talks for hours. Yeah, I plan on being totally down with calling Denver in the middle of the afternoon, huh? Hollering at my boys, kicking it with three-way calling. I plan on grabbing my celly and getting my... Dad! Oh, sorry. Okay. America's most reliable network introduces a plan with truly unlimited calling. Talk as much as you want with anyone in the U.S. for one flat rate. And now buy a text-friendly and your music playing chocolate for just $79.99. Verizon Wireless. triple ingredient formula to start relieving your headache in just 15 minutes. Extra strength, etc. Go. Everything okay, Carl? I'm winning, right? Yeah, but the other drivers think Affleck's sponsorship is giving you an advantage. Well, if you're sick and you can't work, Affleck pays cash fast to help keep you in the race. I know, but they see it a little differently. Ask about it at work. These are our neighbors, and they deserve a great lunch at a great price. Like Applebee's Pick and Pair Lunch Combos starting at $5.99. Choose from over 60 combinations of soups, salads, sandwiches, and pastas. Only at Applebee's. It's a whole new neighborhood. Imagine living to be 150 or more. You know, in my luck, I'd be a thousand. Still living at home with my mom. When we continue after this from our ABC stations. Tonight on Nightline. Hey, all kids tell lies, but could lying actually be a sign of intelligence? Well, this doctor says yes, and tonight she's out to prove it. If you've ever told a little fib, you can't miss this Nightline tonight. I'm Jim Gardner. A 65-year-old woman has been charged with murdering a church worker. And now tonight, the victim's parents tell Action News about their bizarre encounters with the suspect. I'm meteorologist Cecily Tynan. Tonight's showers will bring cold changes tomorrow in the Action with a forecast. And a popular medication gets a makeover tonight at 11. I'm Barack Obama, and I approve this message. My own story wouldn't be possible if it weren't for the American dream. I was raised by a single mom and my grandparents. My grandfather served in Patton's army. My grandmother worked on a bomber assembly line. They didn't have money, but they gave me love, a thirst for education, and a belief that we're all part of something larger than ourselves. So I worked my way through college and law school. I first came to Chicago because I saw people being laid off of steel plants that were closing, and nobody was fighting for them. 
As an organizer with Christian churches, I helped those workers who took their fight to the state center, passing tax cuts and health care for families. In Washington, I got better care for wounded troops who've been neglected and passed the toughest law ever to rein in lobbyists so we can make government work for people. So I've seen the power of opportunity in America when it's working. Uh, I've lived it. If we don't let narrow interests capture the agenda in Washington, there's no problem we cannot solve. designer fashions and knowing there's no reason whatsoever to pay full price marshall's shop on in the modeling business where 30 is considered old you'd think there would be no place for someone old enough to collect social security common you are how old 76 barbara beautiful gorgeous yes not shy about admitting your real age, Carmen has been a successful working model for the past 60 years. The parents of today's top models were not even born when she shot her first Vogue cover at age 16 in 1947. If you could choose any age to be, what age would you choose? Well, right now, of course. Really? Not 50s, not 30s? I wouldn't give up what I know and how I feel about living right now is a lot of this attitude you're looking young and beautiful i think it all starts with thought and attitude and it's her attitude that helped make her a supermodel before the term was even coined her image has only gotten better with age her looks more impressive with her now trademark silver hair okay let's get some beauty secrets you wrote a book some years back, and in the book you said that what keeps you young is sex. Is that still true? Sure. It's part of it. Life has to be a balance, and I've figured out the balance for myself. Sex at 76? Sex always. Do you exercise? I, I exercise every day. I don't get up and have a cup of coffee anymore. I get up and move to get blood to my brain. It's the energy that has to keep going, right? Yes, yes. Training like an athlete. Got enough sleep, uh, not too much booze. I never smoked. Do you use creams on your face? I use lard. Wow. I use anything, anything huh. that keeps the moisture in at night. Uh, one writer said of you, it sounds like keeping a classic limousine in running order. If you have a Rolls Royce, you have to keep <laughs> looking after the parts. And the parts are still pretty good? The parts are still terrific. Age hasn't caught up with this car either. The fastest car on the Lime Rock racetrack in Lakeville, Connecticut, is driven by an 82-year-old man who just happens to be a legendary movie star, Paul Newman. In recent weeks, there have been rumors that Newman may be ill, but when we met up, he showed no signs of slowing down. So this is it. This is the baby, huh? That's the baby. Newman started putting his age on his car when he was in his mid-70s. But if you didn't know how old he was, you certainly couldn't guess it from the way he's driving. How do the younger drivers treat you? Nobody says, there goes old Paul? They could probably do it behind my back. Are you concerned with getting older? Does it worry you? Can't worry me, I'm there. Paul, isn't it a relief that people no longer ask you about your blue eyes? Or do they still? They still do, and it's still an embarrassment. I keep saying, well, I can't take off my glasses because my pants fall down. <laughs> Newman's remarkable acting career spans more than five decades. He's been in classic films and given Academy Award-winning performances. Newman's last major movie role was in 2002 in The Road to Perdition for which he was nominated for an Academy Award at the age of 77. Leave before it's too late. But he says the time has come to bow out. I simply cannot remember lines, and maybe it's become psychological or whatever. It doesn't make any difference because um, once your confidence goes, 
because you're working at maybe about 15% of your potential. With acting now behind him, what is it that keeps Paul Newman going? Maybe it's his 50-year marriage to Joanne Woodward that's still going strong. Or maybe it's his other interests. The food business Newman started 26 years ago, just so he could donate the money to charity, is still growing. And to date, he's given away more than $240 million. But what really keeps Newman young is his passion for racing. From this name, all things derive splendor. Will you take me for a ride later? Sure. Where are you driving like an old man? Uh, <laughs> did you hear that, Paul? He said, I don't have to worry, you drive like an old man. So with old Paul behind the wheel and old Bob strapped in, we went speeding around the racetrack at 150 miles per hour. Woo! It certainly was exhilarating. Ah, fantastic! I love this, but I don't want to do it again. No! But Paul Newman sure did. It was race day at Lime Rock Racetrack, and that day, number 82, the oldest man on the track easily came in first. So much for driving like an old man. Maybe it was the young chick by his side that brought him luck, or maybe it was still having passion. That was fun! When we come back, how do you get to be a hundred and not actor eight? Find out next. Overseas. Standing up for people who weren't getting a fair shake, that's been the purpose of my life, and it will be the purpose of my presidency. I'm Hillary Clinton, and I approve this message. Thank you. Enjoy the game. Thank you. Enjoy the game. Hey, who do you think you are? Gus, the second most famous groundhog in Pennsylvania. Sorry, buddy, you need a ticket to get in. Right here, it's the new Pennsylvania Lottery Major League Baseball Instant Game. You can win season tickets to the Pirates or Phillies home games or your choice of other baseball dream prizes, plus over $20 million in cash prizes. Thank you. <laughs> Enjoy the game. Keep on scratching. Sign up for T-Mobile and get the phone that fits you best. Come in now and choose any Samsung phone for free. T-Mobile, stick together. You are about to meet a group of people who just might calm your fears about getting old. They have all reached the age of at least 100. And a 
it's not just lucky genes, because genes account for only 25% of how long we live. So at 100, could you still drive? Would romance be more than just a sweet memory? Let's find out. My golden years, they're like sparkling diamonds. Centenarians like Elsa are living history. When they were born, Teddy Roosevelt was president. There was no television. Air conditioning and telephones were luxury, and the movies cost five cents without sound. Although in 1908, Henry Ford started the first assembly line for his Model T, most people still got around by horse and buggy. And we brought a group of centenarians to New York to learn the secrets of their remarkable longevity. Carl Hartzell was six years old when the Titanic went down in 1912. I was on the living room floor, and we were looking at a newspaper, and there was a picture of a ship. Do you remember when the Titanic sunk? Elsa Hoffman also recalls the excitement when Bay Ruth broke the home run record. It was 1927. She was 18. As a young teen in Florida, Lillian Cox vividly recalls waving goodbye to the troops as they shipped off to fight in World War I. Vic Spiderbeck's jazz coronet inspired the then 16-year-old Rosie Ross to pick up a trumpet. And Dorothy Young was 18 when she got a job as legendary illusionist Harry Houdini's assistant. He escaped his way into history and a tragic early death. Dorothy outlived him by over half a century, and she's still going strong. We're going to clear up a lot of misconceptions about what it's like to be 100, because I think people think that you're all terribly old. We're going to prove them wrong. What is your life like now, Elsa? If I can make people happy and, and enjoy life with them and do things to spark them up, that's my philosophy of life. Elsa Hoffman worked all her life in several careers. And for her first three-digit birthday, Elsa gave herself a brand new car. If somebody looks at your driver's license, do they ever say, they can't be? Not surprising. And at 101, Lillian Cox still drives too. She ran a successful dress shop here in Tallahassee, Florida for 28 years before retiring to see the world. I didn't dream I would live to be 80, much less 100 years old, so I just spent my money and had a good time. Now I'm down on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you know what? You've got long years ahead. I think you better start saving that money a little bit. <laughs> a lifelong musician, Rosie still supports himself with his trumpet. At 102 years old, he is an institution at the Pinecone Inn outside Phoenix, Arizona, where he's been playing most Friday nights for the last 50 years. They asked me how I lived to be so old, and I say, I say, as long as you want to hear Clyde McCoy's Sugar Blues, I'll live to play it for you. I'm having a bad day, I'll call a centenarian friend, and they will just put it in perspective. As founder of the National Centenarian Awareness Project, author Lynn Peters Adler is on a mission to redefine our perception of centenarians. They're wonderful. All my best friends are 100 and over. Are there certain characteristics of people who live to be 100 and older? It's a love of life, a strong spiritual belief, and the ability to be adaptable, to be changeable. I think that younger people think there's an age limit on fun, and that's just not true. Dorothy and Stan have been going steady for 10 years. Now, you're 100. How old are you, Stan? 94. Oh, so you're going with a younger man. Yes. I see. Well, how nice. How often do you see each other? Two or three times a week, for I... breakfast and once for dinner. For breakfast and for dinner. I won't ask other questions about what happens between dinner and breakfast. <laughs> Relationships like this are important because life at this age can be very lonely. Most centenarians have outlived lifelong friends, 
almost always husbands and wives, and often their children. Making it past 100 takes real courage. Virtually all centenarians have overcome life-threatening illnesses. I've had three major operations. I've had cancer three times. Obviously, you've beaten it. It, it was all taken care of each time. Do you work at all now? I'm very active. I live alone. I have a four-bedroom, three-bath home. If I have no maid, I have been 20 years or uh, more. And I also do a little yard work. I do a little digging, too, Bob. A little digging. You, you can <laughs> bend down and get up again. <laughs> Getting up is a problem. That's hard. <laughs> Lillian also takes care of her daughter, who is recovering from cancer. So, Lillian, you at the age of 100 take care of my daughter, care 80 years of your old. 80 year old daughter. In my home right now. Should be the other way around, but it's not. Say a prayer for her, please. Sadly, just two weeks ago, Lillian's daughter, Carolyn, passed away. That commitment to family is a big reason these centenarians are still living. This group has nine children, 16 grandchildren, and 21 great-grandchildren. And they all continue to lead active, purposeful lives. Carl, a retired history professor, is working on his fifth book, an autobiography. Elsa still runs her business remodeling apartments in Florida as she continues collecting friends. There, there are 180 and when we searched around the country, we found centenarians everywhere who refused to let age slow them down. I say life begins at 80, gets better when you reach 90, and when you reach 100, boy. When we come back. If you're going to live a lot longer, but what about sex? What about sex? I'd like a younger man. <laughs> Next. I'm Jim Gardner. She went on a shopping spree wearing a fur coat and sweatpants, but it wasn't her money to spend. At Two Good Samaritans save a CBS clerk from a knife-wielding attacker. Next on Action News Tonight. Sneak up on the internet. It's been hiding out here forever, and no one can find it except me and my AT&T laptop connect card. Was it Lewis and Clark with a sack full of compasses? No, just me on a dirt road with mobile broadband speed, accessing the customer's database, confirming their orders. La -di da. The internet can't hide anymore. Get the AT&T laptop connect card for free and work in more places worldwide than anyone else. AT&T, your world delivered. Hey, you should look at this. What? Your PAD is just poor circulation and your legs causing you pain. It isn't. Mom, it more than doubles your risk of heart attack or stroke. I didn't want to worry you. You need to read about Plavix. If you have PAD, Plavix can help protect you from a heart attack or stroke. Plavix helps keep blood platelets from sticking together and forming clots. The cause of most heart attacks and strokes. Promise you'll talk to your doctor about Plavix? If you have a stomach ulcer or other condition that causes bleeding, you should not use Plavix. When taking Plavix alone or with some other medicines, including aspirin, the risk of bleeding may increase. So tell your doctor before planning surgery. And always talk to your doctor before taking aspirin or other medicines with Plavix, especially if you've had a stroke. If you develop fever, unexplained weakness, or confusion, tell your doctor promptly, as these may be signs of a rare but potentially life-threatening condition called DTP, which has been reported rarely, sometimes in less than two weeks after starting therapy. Other rare but serious side effects may occur. Can you imagine being married to the same person for a hundred years? Well, if we live much longer than a century, our relationships, our spending habits, our retirement plans are bound to undergo sweeping changes. And so may the jokes about getting old that are a favorite of today's comedians. My grandfather's 97 years old. He falls down all the time when we trip him. And he, uh, no. I know I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid to die young. I'm not. I'm afraid to die old. I remember when I was little, my mother was like, Sue, eat your vegetables so you can grow old like Grandma. I was like, no. <laughs> Why would I want to do that so I could grow so old that eventually I'd just be completely bent in half? The crowd's reaction was no surprise. Racist jokes are taboo in this country, but aging is still fair game. We asked Stephen Dubner, co-author of the book Freakonomics, 
to examine the implications of living longer. And guess what? There's not always truth in humor. In America, everything is young, 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 young. As so many more people get older, will discrimination against aging decrease? I think it has to. There will be too many older people with too much uh, market power, with too much political influence, with too much momentum to create any, any other kind of situation. So if longevity becomes a new barometer of status, then maybe there will also come a time when our sex symbols are post-menopausal men and women. Prevent birth control. Menopause. But could 60 really be the new sexy? Oh God, I can't, can't see. My glasses. Okay. 120 over 80. something are we going to have the same partner for all that time what about marriage i mean do you marry now until death do us part if you're going to live a lot longer why do you want to get married at 20 25 anymore why or do we kind of ritualize a kind of serial marriage culture in this country where you have your your marriage in your 20s and 30s where you have the children then your marriage in your 40s and 50s where you have a partner with whom you do midlife stuff and then your marriage later on i think there's going to be a lot of changes in what economists would call the marriage market or the love market welcome everybody you have eight minutes to get to know each other gatherings like this could become more popular these seniors are venturing into uncharted waters meeting other singles in an eight minute dating event 60 to 75 year olds. So tell me something about yourself. I'm looking for that special needle in the haystack. Maybe it's you. You're cute enough. As more people live older and more people want to have fulfilling lives when they're older, what about sex? What about sex? It's not hard to imagine that with more men dying earlier than women, which has always been the case, there will be a, a lot of older women who presumably want to have a lot of sex. Here's the way economics works. When a good is scarce or expensive, people turn to substitutes. If elderly men are scarce or elderly women, they may turn to other elderly women. So we may see a, a boom in elderly lesbianism. And while many of us will be rethinking romance, your kids and grandchildren will need to rethink their inheritance. You know, kids are gonna get scholarships. Not for soccer or basketball, but just for having parents that are 127 years old and can't afford to pay for college because they retired 65 years ago. There's this thing called the Great Wealth Transfer we've been hearing about. How trillions of dollars will come from what the older generation to the next well. In the old days, you could depend on grandma and grandpa's money to send your, your kids to college. Maybe not anymore. Maybe they'll be using that up. But what will you do with all that extra time? What are those extra years meant to be done with? And that is a huge challenge. And if people underestimate the abilities of older people to do something creative, provocative, it'll be a loss. So well, we've got uh, the older group here, and we've got uh, the younger group here. Let's see what we can do. So we did a little test to see if older people really can learn a new skill, like juggling. Professional juggler Don Rapp trained a group of 8 to 12 year olds and a group of seniors. One, two, three. So you just go ahead and you practice, practice, practice. Juggling is no easy feat, but after three days, the older folks were getting the hang of it, just like the children. It might take longer to learn what you have to learn, but in a sense, an old dog can learn new tricks, and that is vital. There are probably very few skills that older people cannot learn, whether it's languages, music, computers, and so on. Imagine the possibilities. A second career in your 60s, or a third new career in your 80s. In the old days, I think people looked at life as a kind of book that had a beginning, middle, and an end, and they were very predictable. That's changed. Now it's kind of like a series of short stories. There are these different segments where your life will be very, very different. And as people get older, there's going to be all kinds of opportunities. Will it ever be cool to be old? <laughs> I'll say that there will come a time when being old is cooler than being young. Because what being old will represent is power. It will represent money. It will represent having survived. 
It will represent wisdom. You know, it's a prediction I'd like to make. On that optimistic note, and with the hope that we're all going to be around for many years to come, this is Barbara Walters for ABC News, wishing you good night and long life. ABC News Store at www.abcnewsstore.com.